Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And this lecture will be having four learning objectives. The first one is we need to define what is NMS and we need to discuss its pathophysiology. Followed by the second objective is we need to identify the clinical manifestations of a neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And third, we need to describe the diagnostic test for NMS. And lastly, we need to review the treatment of NMS. So we will begin with the first learning objective, define NMS and discuss its pathophysiology, right? Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a life-threatening neurologic emergency which is associated with the use of neuroleptic agents. And this condition is characterized by the tetrad of fever which is usually high followed by it is characterized by having muscular rigidity change in mental status and autonomic instability and neuroleptic malignant syndrome is most commonly seen with the use of the typical high potency neuroleptics such as haloperidol and flufenazine however low potency typical neuroleptics such as chlorpromazine and pyoridazine and the newer atypical neuroleptics such as clozapine olanzapine and risperidone have also been implicated in neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is also seen in patients treated with anti-emetic drugs such as metaclopramide which is a dopamine D2 receptor antagonist as well as uh, it's also seen uh, when the patients are treated with a drug called promethazine which is a yeah, histamine H1 antagonist as well as it is a weak dopamine antagonist right so neuroleptic malignant syndrome has been uh, reported in patients treated for Parkinson's disease when you withdraw a drug like levodopa or when you withdrawing the dopamine agonist therapy right as well as it's also reported in patients uh, in Parkinson's disease where you are reducing the dose or you are switching uh, one drug from to another drug right see the exact cause of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is unknown because of the class of drugs associated with the neuroleptic malignant syndrome most theories of its pathogenesis have focused on dopamine receptor blockade in the central nervous system for instance blockade of the nigrostriatal dopamine pathways may cause Parkinsonian symptoms of rigidity and tremor. Also, dopamine receptor blockade in the hypothalamus may cause hypothermia and other signs of autonomic dysfunction such as fluctuations in blood pressure as well as heart rate. And there is an alternative theory is that muscle rigidity is going to represent a primary effect on the skeletal muscle system perhaps from a direct toxic effect by neuroleptics on muscle cells or from a primary skeletal muscle defect. Familial cluster of neuroleptic malignant syndrome suggested a genetic predisposition to this disorder. For instance, a specific allele of the dopamine D2 receptor gene is overrepresented in neuroleptic malignant syndrome patients. As mentioned before, Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is one of the drug related syndromes which is characterized by high fever, muscular rigidity and autonomic dysfunction. These syndromes also include serotonin syndrome which is associated with the use of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or simply you can call it as SSRIs as well as monoamine oxidase inhibitors and tryptan such as sumatriptan. Also malignant hyperthermia which is a rare genetic disorder associated with the use of depolarizing muscle relaxant uh, like succinylcholine and halogenated anesthetics such as halogen. The incidence of neuroleptic malignant syndrome can be up to 3% among patients taking neuroleptic drugs and most patients with the neuroleptic malignant syndrome are young adults but the syndrome has been described in all age groups. Uh, men are affected twice as much as women and when you look at the clinical manifestations which is our second learning objective 
uh, you identify certain clinical manifestations in this syndrome. See, the symptoms of neuroleptic malignant syndrome usually developed during the first two weeks of you are starting the neuroleptic therapy, right? And it can occur after a single dose or after treatment with the same dose of the same agent for many years. See, the risk factors for neuroleptic malignant syndrome include recent or rapid dose increase as well as and these risk factors also include when you are switching one neuroleptic drug to another neuroleptic drug as well as when you are giving parenteral administration of these drugs, right? See, most patients, the tetrad of symptoms evolves over one to three days as follows. See, they begin with mental status changes which usually consist of agitated delirium with confusion rather than psychosis. And these symptoms can evolve to catatonic signs as well as mutism, stupor, and eventually coma. These are followed by generalized muscular rigidity accompanied by tremor. And patients may also have dysarthria, dysphasia, saloria, which means uh, an excessive secretion of saliva, or you can call it as hypersalivation, right? Hypothermia or body temperatures above 38.4 degrees Celsius is typical of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Higher temperatures of 40 degrees to 41.5 degrees Celsius are considered hyperpyrexia and these temperatures are life-threatening. And temperatures of this magnitude occurs in one-third of patients. Finally, autonomic instability is characterized by tachycardia tachypnea and fluctuating blood pressure, dysrhythmias and profuse diaphoresis may also occur. There's a mnemonic which is useful to remember the clinical features of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. See, this mnemonic is F-E-V-E-R, fever, where F refers to fever, E refers to encephalopathy and V refers to vitals which are unstable, right? E refers to elevated creatine kinase and lastly R refers to rigidity of muscles. So let's turn our attention to our third learning objective and describe the diagnostic test you are going to perform for this neuroleptic malignant syndrome patient, right? See, as previously mentioned, the diagnosis of NMS is that of exclusion. It should be suspected when two major criteria appear in the setting of neuroleptic use or dopamine withdrawal. These are fever higher than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the first major criteria. And second major criteria is having muscle rigidity. So in addition to these two major criteria, we need to have at least two minor criteria. This includes altered mental status, tachycardia, unstable blood pressure, diaphoresis, and tremor followed by elevated creatine kinase and leukocytosis. Laboratory tests served to rule out other conditions in the differential diagnosis like when you are having situation of viral encephalitis, heat stroke and other drug induced syndromes. They also help in evaluating the common metabolic sequelae of NMS. Findings of laboratory tests in NMS include elevated serum creatine kinase from muscle damage as well as from rhabdomyolysis, right? Creatine kinase levels greater than 1000 are typical of NMS. They can be as high as 100,000 and the degree of creatine kinase elevation is going to correlate with the disease severity as well as with the disease prognosis. Myoglobinuria is going to result from muscle damage and it can lead to renal failure, hyperkalemia and metabolic acidosis as well as it also leads to hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, leukocytosis with the left shift and mild elevations of liver transaminases, alkaline phosphatase and lactate dehydrogenase. Now let's turn to our fourth learning objective and review the treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Removal of the causative agent, uh, meaning the neuroleptic or anti-emetic drug, is the single most important step in the treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. 
However, if the cause of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is discontinuation of dopaminergic therapy and Parkinson's disease, that medication should be reinstituted. Supportive care is essential in neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Maintain cardiovascular stability using measures like mechanical ventilation, antiarrhythmic agents or pacemakers as needed. And you need to alkalinize the urine to prevent renal failure if serum creatine kinase is very high. As well as we need to lower the body temperature using cooling blankets and antipyretic medications. We need to control agitation using lorazepam or clonazepam. Specific medications used in the treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome include dantrolene, which is a direct acting skeletal muscle relaxant which is also used in the management of anesthetic induced malignant hypothermia. Bromocryptine, a centrally active dopamine D2 agonist and amantadine which is a dopaminergic and anticholinergic drug, right? So when you look at the prognosis, most episodes of neuroleptic malignant syndrome results within two weeks and most patients recover without neurologic complications. And the mortality rate of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is estimated to be between 10 to 20 percent and it results directly from the autonomic and stability of this disease and from systemic complications such as myoglobinuria as well as renal failure. So my dear friends, this is my quick review on neuroleptic malignant syndrome. If you like this lecture, please do share this lecture with your friends. And if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel for more interesting concepts. We meet in the next lecture with a new concept. Till then, stay tuned. Have a nice day.